Hi students, welcome to lesson 5.6, Properties of Linear Relations. Alright, so um, what do linear relations look like? Well, linear uh, probably makes you think of a line, and relation means uh, the relationship between two variables. Um, a line is actually a function, which is, don't forget, also a relation. So, let's look at this example. So we're renting a car for $60. So no matter what, it costs you $60 to rent this car. The way the company works is that instead of charging you per day, they charge you $200 for every 100 kilometers driven. Okay, so if you drive 100 kilometers, you owe them $80. That's for one example. So the independent variable is the distance. Okay, so that's what you're going to control. You're going to control whether how many or what distance you're going to travel. And the dependent variable is the cost. So whatever um, distance you end up traveling, you will end up paying that much money depending on the distance. All right, so there's different ways to show a linear relation. Table of values is one of them. So let's make a table of values between the independent variable of the distance to the dependent variable of the cost. So the distance zero, it will cost you $60 no matter what. Once you've traveled 100 kilometers, it'll cost you 80. 200 kilometers, 100. So notice that you're going up by $20 every time as you go up by 100 of the distance. So that would be a table of values representing the relationship between distance and cost. Ordered pairs. Okay, so ordered pairs would be basically all those represented as points. So when your x value goes up 100, right, your y value goes up 20. And the other, the other way to represent uh, this relationship is a graph, um, which is probably the most common uh, uh, way to represent this type of situation. Okay, so your x-axis is your distance, that's your independent variable, and your y-axis is your cost, uh, which is your dependent variable. So notice the points we've placed, 0, 60, 180. So notice that for every increase of x is by 100, or sorry, increase of distance by 100, you go up cost by 20. So this relationship appears every single time. Okay, so the graph of a linear relation is in a straight line. So in this case, it'd be a linear relation. The reason for that is every single time you change your, uh, your distance, it goes up, the cost goes up by the same amount. Okay, so um, for a linear relation, the constant change in the independent variable results in a constant change in the dependent variable. Again, 120, 120, 120, 120. So think about it like uh, stairs. So every stair is the exact same amount. So in stairs, if you made put in a straight line from the top of the stairs to the bottom of the stairs, would be just a, a line connecting all the tips of the steps. So the rate of change, the slope. Okay, so the change, the rate of change is considered to be the change in one quantity with respect to the change in the other quantity. Okay, so very much like when the distance goes up 100, um, the cost goes up 20. Okay, so the rate of change can be calculated by the rate of change in the dependent variable uh, divided by the rate of change in the independent variable. Okay, so for our example, so the rate of change of the dependent variable was 20, and the rate of change of the independent variable was 100. So our rate of change would be for every 5 kilometers, you go up $1. So that would be rel relative to the $100, 20, uh, sorry, 100 kilometers, $20. So 5 kilometers, $1. Okay? So if we want to even go down to uh, even closer uh, to a denominator. So notice I said it was $1 per 5 kilometers. Okay, let's say if you want to go down all the way to 1 kilometer, that would bring it down to, divided by 5, so my units are a little off here, so dollars here, so it would be 20 cents per 1 kilometer. Okay, so you can simplify this fraction, so we started with twenty dollars per one hundred kilometers and we simplified that all the way to okay divided by twenty so that'd be five kilometers one dollar all the way to one kilometer twenty cents so this rate of change is constant for a linear relation which means this will continue forever without actually fluctuating so the rate of change can also be determined from the equation that represents the linear function 
Okay, so if we looked at specifically the equation of the linear function, that rate of change exists, exists in that equation. So let's let the cost be c, and let's the distance be d. An equation for this linear function would be c equals to 0.20d plus 60. So 60 would be your initial amount. That's a constant. That's the number we've paid no matter what. To rent this car, we owe $60. Okay. Uh, now we pay 20 cents per distance, so per kilometer traveled. So it's 20 cents per kilometer plus 60. Notice that written as a fraction, this would be C equals to 1 fifth D plus 60. Uh, fix that D a little bit. And notice that this 1 fifth, again, comes back from that fraction of simplified, which is simplified from 20 over 100, so 1 fifth. So this 0 0.2, same thing as this 1 fifth. All right, so let's investigate a couple table of values and understand which of these represents a linear relation. So again, the linear relation, by definition, is it's a constant rate of change. So every time a d or n goes up, that has to go up the same amount every time. All right, so t, if you look at it, okay, is the time in minutes that the number of bacteria is growing. Okay, so here we're going up by 20 minutes every time. Okay, so now the number of bacteria is dependent on the time. So this is your independent variable, and this is your dependent variable. Okay, so um, here at time zero, there is one bacteria. 20 minutes later, there is double the bacteria, so one more. So here we should be going up one every single time. Notice that over here, it's doubled again. Well, that doesn't re represent our linear relation because here if we go up 20, up 20, and you can see that that pattern continues, then this one should go up one and up one every single time. But it's actually doubling every single time, and that does not represent a linear relation. So not a linear relation. since rate of change is not constant. Oops. All right, let's look at the next one. So the relationship between the amount of goods and service, so tax charged, and the amount of purchases. So we're asking you, you is the amount of taxes you pay relative, uh, uh, linear compared to what you um, purchased? So, the amount you purchased, okay, so this is something you can control. So, this is your independent variable, and your T, your taxes, dependent variable. Okay, so we're starting, it didn't start us at zero, so we started at three. That's okay. Uh, sorry, started at 60. Okay. So notice that for independent variable, we're going up by 60 every time. 60, 60, 60, okay? So that means we need a constant uh, amount taxed. So we started at three, we went up three, we went up three, and as you can tell, that remains constant, okay? So here it would be, so yes, since the rate of change is constant. All right, guys, so I hope uh, you've understood what rate of change is and how uh, it can be defined just by looking at some points.